Hi, year six students and parents. It's Miss Harvey here speaking, um, head of year for year seven next academic year. Hopefully I won't be a new voice. Hopefully you've watched some of the other videos that have been uploaded onto the website and you will be very, very, very truly sick of my face by now. Uh, I thought it was really important to kind of give you a layout, of course, because we've had to cancel our transition days, just to give you a rundown of our school facilities, really, and to get a kind of view in your minds of what the school setup really looks like. Um, I am in the process of creating a transition activity in the style of a lesson, which obviously some primary schools may well do within classes. However, you can also do at home. I'll ensure the resources and everything you need are available on this website as soon as they're finished. Uh, so here you have a bird's eye view of East Belgot High School. Uh, you can see there that we have got relatively relative places labelled for you. And as it says to the left hand side, we do have five buildings at East Belgot High School. You'll notice that there's a sixth one, sixth one over here. However, that sixth one is not really used by the school. It's not part of our um, set up anymore. It's used by the mat, kind of the collection of schools. It's an office space, really. And there's no real connection to that. There's no way of students getting to it. So we can, we have five buildings here. And the first four are named after the first letters of the alphabet. The first building we have here is building A. This was the original building when the school was first built. OK, and it's probably the largest building that we have here at East Burgot High. You then have B over here. OK, um, B is home to the reception area. So if you've visited East Bergholt before and gone into the reception, that's that's B, building B. B. You also have block C, which is over here. OK, even smaller than B, um, does not have two floors. A and B both have staircases because it's a two floor building, whereas block C is just on the ground floor. Um, so smaller building altogether. You then have this little tiny block D back there, um, which is really, really small and has just three buildings. And then, of course, you can see there you've got PE. On top of that, you can see that you've got tennis courts here. Next to that, you can see you've got the AstroTurf that is just peaking in the top of the corner here. We have got this massive rugby pitch at the front here. Of course, playgrounds all around the back of PE here. And what you can't see in this bird's eye view that backs onto the playground, you can see the start of it just there, is a really massive field for us to use. So in terms of space, we are a very open site. We're absolutely huge. There's loads of space to spread out and really enjoy yourselves all right um, so let's get to know these buildings a little bit more shall we so okay when you arrive for your first day at school okay um some of you may be dropped in by parents which is absolutely fine in which case you'll kind of follow this blue line here all right this is the school driveway if you like and your parents will come and drop you off there and you know let you out of the car into this big open space here that's the first entry playground it's that it's the first playground you'll see when you walk into school each day okay you can see it's got some nice greenery it's got some benches in it but this is the very front of school so that was what happened if you're driving if you're walking in this is the main road here that belongs along East Virgo, okay going past the garage and things like that and you'll turn up the pathway next to the driveway and come into yep you've got it the same playground area as people being dropped off by their parents. Now, if you're getting a bus, that will look slightly different. The bus will be here. This is called, this is our bus lay-by. This is where the buses drop you off every morning and pick you up every night after school. So it's a very slightly different route because of obviously needing the space for the buses. The buses could not turn around our driveway. That'd be far too tight. So they pull in here, you get out here and you walk. There's a little pathway between these trees. It's really clear. All of the students will use it. So it'll be very, very obvious. OK, a little pathway taking you around the front of B block that brings you into this same area. So on your first day, you will find that this is the first area you meet. This is the first area you'll get to. That will be absolutely littered with staff. There will, of course, also be staff at the front of school in the bus laybys and all along these pathways to help direct you into where you're meant to be. Now, once you arrive in this general area, this is the front of school. This is where a lot of people wait for their friends in the morning until they arrive. And then they'll start to maybe move off to the relevant places that they need to be to form. OK, so those two pathways, whether you're arriving by car, whether you're walking down the road or getting a bus, you will be dropped. You will uh, arrive in the same area altogether. OK, let's move it on. Now. 
when you first arrive, you're going to go into A block. And of course, like I said, there's going to be so many members of staff on your first day helping direct you. So that's not going to be hard at all. You're going to walk into A block. There are some doors pretty much here where you can see this arrow. And you're going to walk into there and join us in the hall. Um, when we get to the hall, you'll all kind of sit down. There'll probably be some time to chat to your friends that you've, you're with or, you know, go and sit down with some friends that you spot in the room when you get there. And once we feel that we've got pretty much everyone in year seven with us, I will then have a quick chat with you and do a little bit of a introduction and a little mini assembly, if you like. Mr. Woodcock, our head teacher, will probably do a little bit of an assembly for you as well. And once we've finished that, I will call up each form tutor one by one and I will read the names of the people in that form and they will get up with their bags and follow their form tutor to their form room. OK, now. The plan is to make sure you know your form tutor's name and what form you are in before the summer holidays. We're in the process of finalising that in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you'll be able to send those letters out so you can go back onto the website and watch the video of the form tutors and really get to know who your form tutor is going to be. But your form tutor will escort you, along with some prefects, to your form room where you will spend most of the morning. So you'll spend most of the morning in your form room with your form tutor, getting to know your form tutor, maybe getting to know a bit of the school. The senior prefects will take you on a tour um, so you can see it for yourself and see all the different areas. We might have a bit of a treasure hunt where you can go and find places. Um, so we're going to do all of that. And basically, your first morning is just going to be spent with the 30 people that are going to be in your form for the next five years. OK. This is what the front of A block looks like. So out in front here, you can see this is the start of that playground that I just told you about. It's the very first playground you enter when you get to East Burgot High. This is the front of the building you'll see. OK, it's obviously much bigger than you can see there. It's a big playground. But it is this, these doors here with the kind of spacecraft looking roof that you will head through to go to the hall. OK, so these are the first doors you will enter when you come to East Burgot High School. And remember what I said, there is going to be staff everywhere. You're not going to be able to find a single spot where there's not a member of staff on that first day trying to help you find your way. What's a really important tip is to remind you that on the front of our buildings, you can see that we've got big blue letters and that's telling you that this is block A. OK, so that's A block. Then B block has one, C block and D block. So all of the blocks, apart from the sports centre, have the letters on the side of them for which one it is. So that's a really quick tip if you feel that you're worried about getting lost. Just try and find that letter on the building and then you'll know which, ones you, which one you need to be in. Now, you might have already met these um, really important people in one of the videos previously uploaded. Um, you will, of course, have prefects with you throughout the first week or two of your time at high school. The role of these prefects, particularly these senior prefects that you can see here, is to ensure that throughout the first week or two, you're never on your own. They will escort you to and from your lessons. They will ensure you get used to your timetable and that you know where you're going. You'll be able to find prefects in multiple ways. Senior prefects, you can tell by the blue ties that they're wearing around their necks. The normal Burgold tie is striped. Whereas you can see that the students in this picture, their ties are completely blue. They are our senior prefix. On top of that, for the first few days particularly, students who are helping you find your way around school will probably be walking around with a big poster on a stick. <laughs> OK, and the big poster on a stick will say your, your form number. So 7A, for instance, or 7B. And they'll be walking around so you can find someone, even if it's not your, someone with your form. Even if you're in 7A and it's someone with a poster for 7B, they'll still help you. They'll still help you find your way. OK, so they'll be on a big poster so you can see them really easily and you can find them really quickly. These prefects will also be around at break and lunch. They will be helping you navigate the canteen, helping you find your way around of where to play, where to go to the toilet and things like that. And just helping you settle in for the first week or two before you really feel at home here. All right. On top of that, for the first few days, you will have a earlier break and lunch for the rest of the school. The reason for this is so that you can really get to grips with the canteen and really get used to the school around you before the crowds of break and lunch start. OK, so you will the first few days you will be really, really supported, particularly by the prefects and other teachers. But also on top of that, having earlier breaks and lunch when it is just your sevens around to get used to things a little bit more. So the biggest thing I want to say to you is please don't worry. 
from the moment you get your foot out of that car or from the moment you step foot into our school from the, from the street or the moment you step off that bus on that first day, there will always be a member of staff or a prefect around to help. Always. You'll probably get sick of seeing us because we'll be absolutely everywhere. OK, so you really don't need to be worried about getting here and not knowing where to go because there will be people telling you which way to go every step along the way. So I just want to show you a little bit more about these buildings, give you a little bit of a feel about what goes on in each one. Let's talk about A block. Um, let's talk about A block to begin with. So as I've said to you, you can see that A block is our biggest building over here. OK, slightly different bird's eye view. And you can see the really important place that year seven playground. It is shared slightly with year eight. Um, however, it's a it's the biggest playground we've got here. So there's so much space to run around and enjoy yourself and play games. Now, we have got a bit of a one way system going on at school in terms of how we enter and exit the buildings. That just means that it's a little bit more free in the corridors. It doesn't get quite so busy. OK, so there are different entrances and exits to each of our buildings. OK, to enter a block to go into this building, you need to go around the back of it. So head towards the school field. Remember, this is the first right here at the front is the first playground you get into on your first day. You just walk straight ahead of yourself, you get to the field, you take that left and you come round, and there is an entrance to a block there, okay? So that is your A block entrance. There's a doorway, you walk in there and it takes you through into here and you can access all of the different areas, okay? That is your entrance to A block. Now your exit to A block is through the doors that we walk in on our first day, the ones that have got that space kind of roof, all right? They're actually exit doors, but for your first day, we'll just use them to enter to make it nice and easy, okay? So those are your exit doors and they will take you out back into this front playground here. So to get into A block, we go around the back and to get out of it, we come out the front of it, okay? And then in order to get into B block, okay, we have an entrance and an exit as well. Right. The entrance is here. Look right next door to that big open plan playground where you're going to arrive on your first day. The doors are really close here. OK, so they're the entrance doors to B block. From there, you can get anywhere. You can get upstairs, you can get downstairs, you can get to the library. And then the exit block is here. OK, so the exit to B blocks over here. And then you can see that C block, because it's a smaller block, because it doesn't have two stories, we have the same entrance and exit to that building. D block also has the same entrance and exit. It's here, okay, to get into those classrooms, you go there. And PE also has the same entrance and exit. So for the for PE, D block and C block, you go in and out the same door. It's only A and B that's a little bit different. So this is A block, as I said, okay. Behind A block is the year seven playground. So A block is probably gonna be quite an important place to you. And on top of that, it has the canteen. So of course, A block is gonna be a really important building, okay. Inside A block, we have the following subjects. Art, art is taught upstairs in A block. Music, music is taught down in this area here, okay. And drama is taught back here. Now the whole bottom floor of A block is maths, which we'll talk through in a minute. Um, upstairs we have languages and we have a food tech room full of cook, uh, cooking utensils and cookers and ovens and things like that. So A block has two floors and three flights of stairs. All right. It also has the canteen, as I said, and the school hall. And it's our biggest building at East Bergart High. So let's have a look at what it looks like inside. So this is inside A block, but this is just the downstairs. OK. So as I remind you, you walk around the back of A block to come into it this way, okay? You'll come down this little corridor you can see there. It's much bigger than it looks on this drawing, of course, all right? And you can see that you can either turn right or you can turn left, all right? Now, if you turn right, there's a staircase next to you. That staircase will take you upstairs to things like art. But around the corner, you have got your a maths room. You've got two more maths rooms down here and the food tech room, okay? Now, what you'll notice about our rooms is they all start with the letter A, and that's because they're in A block. OK, so if it's a single digit number, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 or A6, it's downstairs. OK, it is downstairs in A block if it's only got one number. OK, 
You can then see if you walk along this way, we've got another flight of stairs, okay? And that flight of stairs takes you up to a couple of English rooms, a couple of uh, languages rooms, sorry, okay? Then we walk along the corridor more and we've got the big open plan canteen with some more stairs that will take you upstairs. And you've got the girls' toilets here and the boys' toilets there, okay? You've also got the hall, which is a big open space next to the canteen in the middle of, of A block. OK, and at the back of the hall, you've got some music practice rooms where you can practice your, your instruments. You've got a big drama room, music room and another music room. This music room here houses our Apple Macs, which is really good for remixing music and things. Whereas the bigger music room up here tends to be the one that's more used for practical elements such as playing guitar or playing drums. OK. So A block houses maths on the bottom floor, music and drama on the bottom floor. However, on the top floor, it houses languages, languages and art. OK, so you can see these stairs. These were the stairs next to your entry downstairs. These were the ones right next door to you. OK, and you can see the art is here, the two big art rooms. So one of the art rooms goes over food tech. The other art room goes over the maths rooms. You then use these stairs to get into this building, which is this, this room, which is one of our one of our languages rooms. And you can see those other stairs that we had along the corridor get you into these two. OK, and then the final stairs that were in the canteen get us up to our last two rooms. So as you can see by the numbers, we're now on a double digit, a 10, a 11, a 12. So if your, num if your room is a single digit, it's going to be on the ground floor. If it's a double digit, it's going to be upstairs. Then we have B block. OK, B block is our second largest building. There are two sets of stairs in B block, one that we use to go up and one that we use to go down. There are signs on the floor that to help you. So really, really don't worry. You'll get to know the one way system very easily. The subjects taught in B block are history, geography, B&E, science and IT. B block does also house our library, our LRC the reception and our student support area, which you can go to if things ever get tough. This is the bottom floor of B Block. You can see there the entrance door, okay? And a reminder that this playground out the front here is the one that you get to on your first day. It's the first playground you see. And you go through the entrance doors and the, store, door, the stairs right next to you are the ones you use to go upstairs, okay? But you can see there you've got all of your B, B1, B classrooms, because we're in. B block. So we had A beforehand and now we're in B for B block. You can see that we've got B1, B2, B3, B4 and B5. And all of those are single digits because this is the ground floor of B block. You can see you've got your library here, the reception, which is over here, a long staff room. And then you can see a couple of toilets there. And you'll also notice that at the other side of B block are the stairs down, the stairs down into this building. OK, now let's have a look at upstairs. And now you'll notice that our, our letters have become B10, B12, for instance, double digits because we're upstairs. OK, and you can see that you've got the stairs that you'd come up. This is where you'd come upstairs. So you'd be walking out to here and in front of you would be an IT room and next to you would be an IT room. If you go around this corner, you've got some science rooms. OK, and if you go back down here you've got another science room but you've also got a little sneaky history room there in there okay and another IT area and this is our student support area okay student support area is a really important place where you go and get support and help if you need anything okay so that is B block first floor this is C block okay the one at the very bottom as you can see there and it's our next biggest block, but it's still pretty small. There's only one floor. It's just ground floor. So it doesn't have any stairs at all. No stairs at all. So as you can imagine, all of the rooms pretty much are C1 or something. OK, the subjects taught in C block are English, science, IT and DT. OK, so A block for maths, B block for science, C block for English. But there are a couple of sciences in this C block as well, because there's got some beautiful big um, science labs in there. In D block, D block is the smallest out of all of our blocks. There's just three classrooms in it. There are no stairs in B block. 
in D block or toilets. Okay, it is literally just got three classrooms and a little office space in there. Top tip my classroom is D2. So my classroom is in this block here. I'm towards the back corner here, D2. All right, so you'll find me in there sometimes. Okay, let's have a look inside. So here's C block, and remember, we enter and exit by the same door. You can see that you've got your toilets right by the left of you. Okay, so you'd walk in these doors here, come around this corner, and you've got your toilets. You've then got your first English classroom, C1, and you've got English going right away along that corridor. Remember, there are some there are some English classrooms in D block as well. Okay, we'll see those in a minute. You've got an IT room at the very end, and then those two big, lovely science rooms. Okay. And then we come around this corner, okay, we walked in the door, walked straight and turned right. We've got a beautiful big uh, design and technology room there, another design and technology room there, and a final one there, and just another um, IT room then, okay? So C block does have double digits on the ground floor, purely because it we didn't want to name them anything different than C, and there obviously wasn't an upstairs. Um, so we just kept going around C. But if, as you can see, it kind of works in um, in kind of clockwise order. OK, so you walk in and to your left, C1, C2, C3, and it goes around in kind of a clockwise order, like a circle, you see. OK, so if you're wondering where C9 is going to be, well, you can work out that it's probably going to be over this side because C1, C2, C3, there's a lot of letter, there's a lot of numbers before nine, for instance. D block looks a little bit like this, okay? Although there's one main entrance to D block, which is here recently because of COVID, we've been using some of the back doors, which you can see here. Um, so this is tended to just be an exit for D1, this English room here. My, ex my entrance tends to be my back door over here, which is overlooks the school field. And then you've got an entrance for D3 here, okay? You know, you'll notice that this wall is collapsible, so sometimes that can be made into one big space, but normally it's kept as two separate English rooms. And finally, we have PE. The PE teachers obviously also use the school field, the astroturf, the tennis courts, a lot. However, in this building, we have four changing rooms, a fitness suite with a gym, with gym equipment like row machines, a big sports hall for basketball and badminton, and a gym. Where, which we use for trampolining and some smaller team sports. For PE, you will line up outside this long route here, okay? This is where you'll line up. And your PE teachers will be there ready to show you that anyway, and they'll tell you when you can go in and show you where you're going to get changed. You will not need your PE kit for your first PE lesson, okay? You will not need PE for the first couple of days at East Virgo High. Here's the inside of the P change P block. Okay, you guys tend to walk in this route, this route here, and the boys changing is there, followed by girls changing. Okay, when you come out of there on your first P lesson, you're probably going to go into the big sports hall at the back here, and spread out, and the P teachers will talk to you about how P is going to run. But you've also got the gym here. You've got your fitness suite with all the row machines, and this is where you can find P teachers a lot of the time in the office space. That's where they are at break and lunch. So that's kind of it, really, in terms of the layout of the school, OK? I think it's important to remind you of how there's going to be people around all the time to help you. You'll get fed up of seeing people, and you'll probably get fed up of people asking if they can help you, <laughs> um, especially when you're starting to want to do it yourself a little bit more, OK? But the most important thing to remind you of is on that first day in September, you will all kind of congregate in this first in this first area here. There will be so many staff telling you where to go. And I will meet you in the hall along with some of your form tutors. And we really cannot wait to meet you. Hopefully that's explained the school building a little bit. OK, um, most important thing to remember is that right here, you can't quite see it in the picture, but practically right there, there's a big signpost. And the signpost tells you what way to go if you want to get to A block, what way to go to B block, C block and D block. It's like a yeah, it's just a big signpost that tells you the way, okay? So if in doubt, always head back to this central area here where the signpost will direct you one way or the other. But of course, for the first week or two, the prefix will be showing you the whole way around your timetable and they won't leave until you're confident that you know where all of your lessons are. So I hope that's helped a little bit. Of course, watch the rest of the videos that we've got on the website. 
um, they'll bring it will hopefully bring in a little bit more. I know that the senior prefects are probably going to do a bit of a vlog of them walking around the school day, which will really help kind of picture it for you. This was just a summary of the school site. So it's been lovely speaking to you. Um, and of course, look out for those other videos because I'm sure they will all help you feel a little bit better before you come here in September. Thank you.